Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today's play is about a stalled out piece of art. Now, this happens to me sometimes in art journals or an individual piece of art, and maybe it happens to you where you get partway through it and it's like the mojo just ran away. The muse has left the building and it's just, eh. it's just, and it sits and it sits and it sits. Yeah. I got plenty of those things and today I'm sharing with you what you can do with one of those when that happens. Now this piece that I had, I didn't hate the entire thing, but I didn't like most of it. There's one little part that I liked and I kept that and I gave myself a do over on the whole thing. You're also going to see how when I created the title for it, I didn't have exactly the words that I wanted to stencil. So how I can steal letters from other parts of the word to build just the word that I need. So here's what I found, buried in the back of the studio, hidden on a shelf, kind of a thing. And I've got some stenciling on there. I've done a little bit of painting on top of it, a little scribble journaling. And I've got the image transfer of that woman there. Now she is actually quite lucky for me today because I actually have the mask that goes with her. And, and I say mask, really what it is, is I use craft attitude to put her on as an image transfer. And so I kind of cut her out loosely. The backing sheet there, somehow I still had it. I saved that with her. Don't know why I did that, but wow, I'm thinking today's the day I need to go buy a lotto ticket because it's just what I need to make what I'm gonna do to this look, well not look, but go really easily because I really like her, but the rest of it, eh, I could care less about. So what am I gonna do? Yep, that jar of white paint's pretty much a giveaway there. So I'm just gonna take that paint and go right over it. Now I say cover it all up, but technically everything really isn't getting completely covered. Little bits of it will still peek through. Now one of the nice things about craft attitude is that precision is not necessary. In fact, everything that you're gonna see in this video today, precision is definitely not required. Now, as I put the mask on there, yeah, it wasn't on perfectly. It wasn't precise. And so I got a little bit of paint over on her. How easy is that to fix? It's a baby wipe, comes right off. And that's especially helpful that it was craft attitude because of it's just very, it'll pull it right off. It's kind of like a plastic lining coating, whatever it's magically made out of. I just know that the paint will come right off of it. Now, when I want to do an image transfer, craft attitude is probably the easiest thing I've ever found to do it with. And I've got a video linked for you that'll show you exactly how to use it if you never have. Oh, and by the way, this image that I printed onto it, it is cre was created by Tangie Baxter. Well, all that white space is calling out to me for color. I'm gonna start by adding some yellow here around the edges. And what I'm using is an art crayon by Marabou. One of the reasons why I'm really enjoying playing with these is how creamy they are, how well it spreads, just using my fingers when I use it, well, when it's fresh right now, but in a couple of hours, it will have a very dry feeling to it, so it won't be, it won't have that creamy feeling that it has now. Basically, it dries, and I really like that. So I used the compass stencil from Stencil Girl, designed by Mary Nasser, and it means two things. It's kind of like the sun giving off light, and it's also trying to find your way a compass, so since it means two things, I decided to use two colors of paint there. I've got one that's a deeper magenta and one that's more of a neon pink. And the two of them working together, I'm just gonna load that color all around. Now here's the thing, I'm living on the edge. I've put a lot of paint on here and you'll notice I'm very carefully pouncing up and down because if I'm gonna put this much paint on here, there's a chance that it's gonna run underneath. So I'm actually stenciling pretty carefully Again, since I know I'm loading this up with so much paint, playing with two colors. And it did work. I was careful and it paid off. And just for that reason, I'm gonna keep that nice and crisp looking right now. Well, you'll see what happens to it a little bit later. It may not stay that way. So now we've hit the fiddling part where I'm just gonna play around with some colors. And one of the most important tools that I've ever come to use, the baby wipe. Yep, that's what I'm using there. I'm painting some color on and then wiping some of it off with the baby wipe. Now the paint, well, you know how that stuff behaves, but just to let you know that the art crayons do react to water. So if I rub on the yellow a lot, I'm really gonna pull that stuff off. Whereas paint, you can work it a little bit harder and not have all of it come up. So I'm just gonna keep playing around here, getting a little more color onto this and covering up all that white paint. 
but now I want to create a word to go on her, like a title. So I grabbed a piece of painted cardboard that I have. I have a wonderful stash of painted cardboard from when I'm playing around. And the stencil that I'm going to use is one called Uplifting Words that I created for Stencil Girl. Now I'm going to pick two words from on here. I want to do She Searches. Now the she is right there on the stencil, and the word searches, well, it's not on the stencil, but the word search is. So that means I have everything that I need, and I'll show you how. So I picked the spot on the cardboard where I want to put the word she, and I've got some black paint and just a plain old cosmetic sponge. Now as I do this, I'm going to go in an up and down motion, attempting to be careful about this, but you can see I've already stopped going in the up and down. You can see the side to side. And it's not going to matter if these don't stencil perfectly, because guess what? Yep, we're putting more on top of it after we stencil the letters. But there is one thing that I didn't think about that maybe I should have taken a moment to contemplate before I stenciled the word right there. And that is how thick my cardboard is. So I want to cut this word off of here, but this is some super thick cardboard. So this is going to be a two-handed cut in some places. And yeah, my hand's going to be kind of sore after the next word. But you know what? The sacrifices that we all make for the art, for the play. So now it's time to do the second word, searches. Now the word search is on the stencil, and what we're going to do is just stencil that word, and then I'm going to steal the E and the S from the beginning of the word and pop it on the end. That way it'll say searches. Now as I'm stenciling this, again, notice I'm kind of going side to side. Yeah, that means I'm going to have some imperfect stenciling here. Guess what? Not going to be a problem. I can't even call this an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly, because I do this all the time. We'll save the oops for in just a second. So what I'm doing now is lining up the E from in the word, and I'm thinking I've got it where I want it, and I'm going to then just stencil the letter E, coming in with that little cosmetic sponge just in that one area. And when I lift up the stencil, yeah, I am not going to like where it is. Oops, it is just backed right into that H. What am I going to do? It's the baby wipe again. If I get to it quickly and it's on something that's already been painted, I can just wipe that letter right off and I can do this again and give myself a little more space. Now I'm feeling good about this time. I think this time the E is going to make me happy. Now when I say that, does that mean that the E will be perfectly spaced? No, but it's spaced well enough for me. If I were to get out some kind of precise measuring instrument like a ruler and measure it, yeah, I could do that but that doesn't bring me joy, so I'm just going to eyeball it here. And now I'm going to put the S, and suddenly search has become searches just by using letters within the same word. Now what about that black paint up there? Yep, that's the baby wipe. Takes it right out. And now the part that's tough, the cutting the cardboard. Again, <laughs> thinner boxes, thinner cardboard is easier to cut with scissors. So what you're seeing me do is work from one side and then flipping it around and trying to get to the other side. I'm going to trim off part here, and that'll give me an easier access to start from the other side. So when I've got thick cardboard, I work from each end and then kind of meet in the middle. By the way, have you been enjoying this video? If you're watching it and you're this far into the video, I hope you're having some fun. If so, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And yes, of course, you know I'd so appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up too. All right, so now let's talk about those words. I've got the stenciling on there, but I'm going to add another layer to it. I'm going to bring in another art crayon, and this time I'm just going to go right over the lettering with it. But this is a wider crayon, so how am I getting a fine line to it? Well, I'm actually using the very, very edge of the crayon. If you see the tip of this crayon, you can see that it's a very, very flat from when I'm covering large areas with it and I don't have a point or a tip on it. So that's why I'm going to use the very corners, the edges of it. That's going to give me a sharp line, which is why I have such an interesting angle here to this. I will say that doing straight line letters are much easier than those curvy ones like S's. But if this is the biggest challenge that I face today, I'm going to call it a pretty darn awesome day. So now on top of that black paint stenciling that I've got there, I've got some color. It fits more with the look of what this piece is. And the other thing is, well, it's more color. And anything that can get me more color on something, I'm all in for. 
So I've got the title made for this piece, but there's some journaling that I want to do on here. And to get that journaling on, I'm going to bring in the fine liner. What this is, is an empty bottle that's been filled with white ink and it's just that very fine tip that doesn't clog. And then I am scribble journaling with it. And yep, getting a little bit on her too, but wipes right up. And uh, anyway, so I'm just scribble journaling my thoughts, what the meaning that I'm getting from her, how it feels to me, that type of thing all over the place. If you've never used a fine liner or they're new to you, I've got a video where I explain a little bit more about them and why they're so awesome to write over things like wet paint. Now, remember that compass that I said I stenciled so well on? Yeah, I've already started to put some layers on top of that by scribble journaling over it. And there's still more to come on top of that. So yeah, I stenciled that perfectly, but there really wasn't any big need for me to do that because well, you'll see what I'm about to do to it. I've got a Stabilo pencil here and I am just going to trace around the different lines on the stencil and toss a little bit of bonus journaling, some thoughts in there about True North right there in the middle of this. Now pretty much everything's done for this except for gluing down the words. Now those are the words that I know that I want to use, but where exactly am I going to glue them down? Should I leave them down on the bottom like that? Should I turn it? Should I put it on the right, on the left? Should I split them apart? Yeah, I tried this about 50 different ways before I had to have a little discussion with myself and tell myself I had three seconds to commit and pick exactly where I was gonna glue them down and then I need to just glue these things down. So I snapped myself out of that overthinking with the good old three second rule and I highly recommend that if you're ever stuck overthinking those three seconds, man, it sure can get you moving on stuff. I'm going to glue these down with some tacky glue and then I'm going to call this finished for now. It's not completely feeling done to me, but I'm going to step away from it just because I know I'm heading towards overthinking with it. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you'd like to see more of what I'm up to, more play, more fun, head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com where I've got a free workshop called Permission to Play as well as lots of other fun stuff. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.